Greetings. A point of reflection is a good starting point, considering how far we've come since this time last year when we provided the quarter three update. Global markets have staged their recovery year to date, as highlighted by the table on the left, whilst the quarter three presented challenges across pretty much all global asset classes, as markets finally started to reflect the likelihood of interest rates staying higher for longer. In terms of where returns were to be found over the last three months, the Japanese and UK equity markets were among the only regions in positive territory, but weakness of their currencies resulted in negative returns when translated to dollars. We continue to experience another poor quarter of returns in bond markets, with US Treasury down minus 3%, global bonds down minus 4%, as bond markets everywhere came under pressure. Bond prices and bond yields have an inverse relationship, so rising yields benefited the dollar, which strengthened across major currencies, including the rand. We are undoubtedly focused on outcomes when constructing the global portfolios, but the performance of the funds are unfortunately still impacted by the changing market dynamics. The three global funds performed in line with markets in quarter three, with the global cautious being the biggest detractor due to its relatively high allocation to global bonds. When looking at the year-to-date numbers, developed market equities have outperformed, particularly the US. However, those returns have come from a very concentrated part of the market. This slide shows the performance of what is now termed the Magnificent Seven against the remaining 493 stocks, and it's quite evident that the massive recovery has not been across the board. As a result, we have not fully captured the upside of global equities. As we follow a diversified approach, however, diversification has not yielded fruit so far this year, a theme we have seen quite often over the past few years. It was also a tough quarter for the feeder funds, performing in line with the hard currency funds after sideways movement in the US dollar to rent exchange rate over the quarter. Over the long term, the feeder funds have delivered great returns to clients, highlighting the importance of hedging against the rent depreciation in the long term, as shown by the graph below. Just to end off on a slightly more positive note, this slide shows the historic US cash and bond yields. There's been a significant rise in yields compared to the period of near zero or even negative rates in some instances. Both the three months and 10 year treasuries are currently yielding more than the US equity market dividend yield. This indicates a change in regime where there was no alternative to global equities. Fixed income can again play an integral role in portfolio construction, which should benefit multi asset funds, which have been particularly hit, badly hit with the usual diversification benefit not rewarded. We are confident that we are now much closer to the end of this challenging period than the beginning. The opportunities that have emerged for multi-asset funds are as promising as they've been in a long time. This bodes well for the Momentum Global Managed Range, which forms part of the MFP Global House View. As we wait for the turn in economic and market cycle, which will inevitably come, we advocate a long-term and well-diversified investment approach, continuing to blend equities for long-term growth with some more defensive assets, including inflation-protected government bonds, infrastructure, and gold. In conclusion, it is important to stay invested through the cycle, as investors who disinvested at the peak of last year's market sell-off would have missed out on the subsequent recovery seen this year.